life. What a mess. Mess on whose part? Surely we can rightly charge God with the mess. For scripture says God made man upright. Well then, the mess must be ours. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Their ways are corrupt. Violence, pain, drunkenness, divorce, abuse, godlessness, emptiness, no restraint, no vision, no direction, no purpose, no joy, no hope, suicide. Yes, we are suffering the consequences of a godless generation. Scripture says it is not in man to direct his own steps. Jesus said Satan comes to steal kill and destroy. I have come that you may have a better way of living. And there is a better way of living. Welcome. I'm Pastor Ian from the Living Word Church in San Pedro. We're about to have a wonderful time in God's Holy Word. Today I want to talk to you about a vision of a living hope. Let's see what the scripture says about that. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 through 5, it says, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has begotten us again to a living hope, to an inheritance reserved in heaven for you, ready to be revealed in the last day. It says that this happened through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So scripture tells us there is a living hope. Oh, my friend, I'm going to share that with you in just a little bit. But I'm sure that you would agree with me if there is a living hope, then there must be a dead hope. I think you're going to embrace much better a living hope if you understand what a dead hope is. Is. So first, let's reflect on a dead hope. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 11 through 13 says, Therefore remember that you once being Gentiles in the flesh, that at that time you were without Christ, having no hope without God in this world. Let me say that again. You were once without Christ, having no hope without God in this world. Very beautifully, the scripture presents to us what a dead hope really is. And here is what it says. Look at this divine sandwich. The Bible says here you have Christ living without Christ and on the right hand side living without God and smack in the middle it says living without hope. What is a dead hope? A dead hope is when an individual, when people live their lives without God, without Christ in this present world. The Bible says living without God and living without Christ is to be living without hope. That's what the Bible calls a dead hope. James chapter 4 verse 13 through 15 says, Look here, you people who say, Today or tomorrow we're going to a certain town and we'll stay there a year. How do you know what will happen tomorrow? For your life is like the morning fog. It is here for a little while and then it is gone. You know, we have many plans in life. The Bible says there are many, many people that get up in the morning and it is life as per usual, conducting business, making money, trying to make a living, trying to survive. Scripture says, listen, people who say these things, whose plans every morning is to wake up and uh, it's business as usual. It says, don't forget what your life really is is. It says your life is like the morning fog. It is here today and gone tomorrow. Therefore, we need to understand that if we live our lives every single day, getting up doing the exact same thing without God and without Christ, the Bible says we're living in dead 
hope. Our hope is not really hope at all. It's going to be cut short. Philippians chapter 3 verse 18 through 19 says, For I have told you often before with tears in my eyes that there are many whose conduct shows that they're really the enemies of the cross of Christ. Listen, their future is eternal destruction and they, all they think about in this life here on earth is pleasure. My brothers and my sisters, my friend, listen, concerning a dead hope, the Bible says that our, if our conduct is one of only thinking about the earthly pleasures every single day, it says that our future holds nothing but destruction and even eternal destruction. That's what we call a dead hope. No matter how hopeful we might be, if our hope does not include eternity, if it does not include God, if it does not include the Lord Jesus Christ, we do not have any hope. It is a dead hope. In Luke chapter 12, verse 16 through 21, it gives us the perfect example of this man who was really living in dead hope. Oh, he was very, very hopeful. But was it really hope? Was it a living hope? Or was it a dead hope? It says here, The ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully, and he taught within himself saying, What shall I do since I have no room to store all my crops? So he said, I'll do this. I'll put all my barns down and build greater one, and I will store all my crops and goods for years to come. The Bible says this man was very, very wealthy, so much so that he did not even have room to contain his wealth. And one day he sat down and thought about his life thoroughly. He thought about his wealth. And in all his thoughts, not even once did he have thoughts about God. Not even once did he think about eternity. He did not think about God. The Bible says all he thought about was the earthly things, what life can afford. And the Bible says when he thought about the problem he had of not even being able to store his wealth, all of a sudden like a light came on and he said, you know what, I'm going to tear down all my barns and I'm going to build greater ones. And you know what? I am going to be able to store all my wealth. Now listen. He says, and I'll say to my soul, soul, you have many goods laid up for many years to come. Take ease, it says, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, fool, this night your soul will be required of you. So the man thought about building greater barns. And then it says, he said to himself, take it easy. You have many years ahead of you. Just eat, drink, and be merry. He deceived himself. He forgot that God was in control. He forgot that life was not, was not his own. It did not belong to him. He had a lease in life. And the Bible says that he had a false hope, a dead hope, because he said he had many years ahead of him. The question is, who lied to him? Who told him that he had many years ahead of him? You know, that's how we live our lives basically every day. Our thoughts are always, well, I'm young. Or maybe I'm middle age. I have at least 20, 30, 40, 50 years ahead of me. And when I get in the higher, upper years, I'm going to start to think a little bit about eternity and about God. Well, this man deceived himself because he thought he had many years. And God reminded him, hey, you might control everything else in your life, but you don't control your, the amount of days you live on this earth. I am the one that controls that. And God says, as a matter of fact, I'm telling you that tonight you're going to die and all your plans are going to come to an end. That man instantly understood that he was living in a dead hope. My friend, as you listen today, is God in the picture? Is Jesus Christ in the picture? Are you living with God and Christ in your heart? Because if you're not, I'm telling you, your life is just like a fog. Like this man who thought he had many years ahead of him, you might be the exact same way. You might think you have 
scores of years ahead of you. But I want to remind you, God holds the plug. He can take your life home at any time. It is important that you do not live in false hope and dead hope. You need to live in living hope. Ephesians chapter 8, verse 7 and 8. Indeed, you have come. How can people avoid what they don't know what is going to happen to them? None of us can hold back our spirit from departing. None of us has power to prevent the day of our death. There is no escaping that obligation. Very, very real portion of Scripture to reflect on. We cannot hold back death from coming. It's going to come. And 1 Timothy 6, 6 and 7 says, Yet true religion with contentment is great wealth. After all, we didn't bring anything with us into this world, and it is certain we cannot take anything out. Scripture, my friend, reminds us about the brevity of life. It reminds us not to live in dead hope or false hope. We want to live our lives in living hope. And li living in a living hope is to include God and Jesus and eternity into our lives. I want to remind you of the scripture that I opened with this morning. First Peter 1 Peter 1.3.5, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has begotten us to a living hope, to an inheritance reserved in heaven for you, ready to be revealed in the last day. Now, we have already looked at what dead hope is. Dead hope is when we live in this world without God, without Jesus Christ. The Bible says we do not have a hope. It's going to be taken away from us. Now let's reflect on what a living hope really is. Because first of all, I want you to understand, God wants us to have a living hope. God is not unfair. He doesn't want to see us suffer. And even more, he certainly doesn't want us to live without him for all eternity. The Bible says God has begotten us to a living hope. It is an inheritance and it is revealed to us from heaven and kept in heaven until the last day. First of all, the living hope includes the hereafter, the life after. If you have been living your life for a long time without thinking about eternity, oh, I'm so thankful that you've tuned in and you have me in your home this morning because I want to tell you as surely as you've been born, as surely you're going to die. And that could be soon, that could be far from now, but we all are going to die. And scripture says that God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, has given birth to a living hope inside of us. And that living hope has everything to do with tomorrow, but it even includes today also. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 20 says, But we are citizens of heaven, where the Lord Jesus Christ lives, and where, and we are eagerly waiting for him to return as our Savior. First of all, a living hope includes that we know where we're going to spend eternity. And as we believe in Jesus, as we accept Jesus, as we live for Jesus, the Bible says that that is a living hope because we know that we become citizens of heaven. Friend, when a person is a citizen of a certain country, and they go and they visit another country. They visit another country with very little in their life because they know that they're not going to stay there. Most of their possessions are back home where their citizenship is, is be, and that's because that's where they're going. They're, they're living. They're going to live. You and I, if we're citizens of heaven, heaven let's not get too attached to the things of this world. Let's not live our lives like what we're acquiring on earth is all we're ever going to have. We can become distracted concerning eternity and really not even end up there. Scripture says we are citizens of heaven. And if we live like that, we are living 
indeed with a living hope. Second Peter 3, 3 through 4, it says, First I want to remind you that in the last days there will be scoffers. This will be their argument. Jesus promised to come back. Did he? Then where is he? Why, as far back as anyone can remember, everything has remained the same. While we're living with a living hope, there will be many who will come along and try to discourage us. People will say, well, why all the sacrifice? Why do you go to church every day? Why, why, why do you read your Bible? Why do you uh, choose not to do this and not to do that? Why can't you live like regular people, normal people, just enjoying life? And, and you know, if you allow people like that to talk into your life, they'll discourage you and you'll lose your focus. The Bible says these people will come along. But the truth is we must remind ourselves, Jesus did indeed promise that he is coming back again. And guess what? He is coming back again. And every day that we live our life, He is going to come again. And He is coming sooner and sooner every day that passes by. And for us to live believing that Jesus is coming again is to be living with a living hope and not a dead hope. Second Peter 3, 10 through 13. But... The day of the Lord will come as unexpectedly as a thief. You should look forward to that day and hurry it along. Verse 13 says, But we're looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth that God has promised us. Again, talking about a vision of a living hope. Do you have one? I'm giving it to you right now. The Bible says that you and I should be looking forward to that day when Jesus comes again. Why? He is going to come. And then the Bible says that we're looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth. My dear friend, are you tired of seeing all the chaos in this world? Are you tired of seeing injustice in this world? Are you tired of seeing sin reign and rule and just spread rampant throughout the earth? Well, don't fix your eyes on that. We're not here to stay. We're not here forever. The Bible tells us God has already prepared a new heaven and a new earth where only believers will live. That's called the living hope, my friend. Don't be overwhelmed by what you see on this earth. As a matter of fact, don't even give it a second thought. You live for God. You live with the promise of Jesus. You live for this new heaven. You live for this new earth. That's a living hope. It's going to give birth to that living hope inside of you. To live for anything else is to live in dead and false hope. James chapter 5 verse 7 and 8 says, Therefore be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth? Think about a farmer. A farmer always lives with hope because he knows as long as he plants the seed, the harvest will come. And yes, he knows he has to discipline himself and wait because there is a long time between sowing and harvest. Scripture says as believers, that's the way we should think. We know that Jesus Christ is coming again. Be patient. He is working out so many things on our behalf. And when it's all ready, He is going to come again. The Lord Jesus Christ is at hand. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 through 53, and then verse 58. It says, but let me tell you, a wonderful secret God has revealed to us. Not all of us will die but we will all be transformed. It will happen in a moment in the blinking of an eye when the last trumpet sounds. For when the trumpet sounds, we who are living will be transformed. So my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and steady, always enthusiastic about the Lord's work. Notice what, what Paul wrote to encourage the heart of the Corinthians. He says, listen, Jesus promised he'll come again. And when he comes again, everything 
everything on this earth will be changed instantly. He says, listen, for believers, we will be taken like the blinking of an eye. We will be taken, he says. So encourage one another. Build up each other. Be enthusiastic about living for God and what you do for God. That's called the living hope. He says, because Jesus will not tarry, he will not fail. He will come again. Are you living enthusiastically for Jesus Christ? Are you living enthusiastically about the things you do for Jesus Christ? If you're not, that's because you're living in a dead hope. Because you have your eyes on the things of this world. But if you're living for Christ and you're doing stuff for Christ, you will be living with a living hope because you have your eyes on eternity. The Bible says the trumpet will sound and so many things will happen. For those that are not living for Christ, it's going to be a very fearful thing. For those of us that are living for Christ, it's going to be the utmost beauty of our life. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 through 4. If then you were raised with Christ, in other words, if you were born again, if you have trusted Jesus, if you're saved, it says then, seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting by the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above and not on things on this earth. It says, when Christ who is our life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. The Bible says, listen, if you're a believer, if you're born again, if you're saved, it says then seek the things of eternity because you're a citizen of there. It says set your mind on things above. Don't be distracted. Don't, you cannot afford to live your life like you're staying here forever because you're not. Jesus will come again and he'll take you home and when he does, there is where you're going to spend eternity with him. So scripture says seek the things that are above and set your mind on things that are above and when Jesus comes we're going home with him 2nd Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18 while we do not look at the things which are seen but the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporary but the things which are not seen are eternal my dear friend, that takes discipline. It takes training. It takes practice that it would be developed into a habit and the habit would develop into character. The Bible says do not set your eyes on the things that are seen. Rather, set your eyes on the things which are not seen seen. Now for a natural person, a person that is not born again, a person whose mind is not renewed, that would sound crazy. How can you set your eyes on something that you cannot see? Yet, for the believer it real, it's real. We have spiritual eyes. We have the eyes of our heart that God has enlightened. And the scripture says that we should train ourselves Every day, practice and let it become a habit and let it form character that we start to think and look at the things that we cannot see. Why? It is the things that our natural eyes cannot see that are the eternal things, that are the real things. The things that our natural eye can see those are not permanent, they're transitory, they're fleeting, they're, they're, they're being corroded and gobbled up right before our eyes. The Bible said, said instead, train yourself to look at the things that are eternal because then you will be developing a vision of a living hope. If you do not do that, you're going to be caught up in the things of this world. And when you're caught up in the things of this world, the Bible calls it a dead hope. It is not a hope at all. It is just wishful thinking. My dear friend, are you living with a vision of a living hope? Or are you living in a dead hope? Reconsider your life. Give your life some thought. Think about the things you do every single day. The things you're living for right now. If it is not bearing anything on eternity, if it's not including God and the Lord Jesus Christ, you are living without hope. It is called a dead hope.
But as you reconsider your life, give thought to God, the importance of Him. Give thought to Jesus Christ, the importance of Him. Give thought about heaven because it's eternal. God's going to set up a new heaven and a new earth right here on this earth that we're living in. And God wants you to live with Him forever and ever. Listen to this scripture. 2 Corinthians 5, 1 through 6. It says, For we know that when this earthly tent we live in is taken down, when we die and leave these bodies, we will have a home in heaven. God himself has prepared it for us. And as a guarantee, he has given us the Holy Spirit. So we, all, we are always confident, even though we know that as long as we live here in these bodies, we are not at home with the Lord. How wonderful, how beautiful a scripture this really is. It says, when this tent falls down, when these bodies die, we're going to live with the Lord. My dear friend, whether you like to hear it or not, you're going to die. And the Bible says God has given birth in our hearts to a living hope through the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that living hope must include God, must include Jesus Christ, must include eternity. If it doesn't, it is no hope at all. Friend, I'd like to encourage you. Would you take the time to change the way you live? Because God certainly wants you to have a living hope. I'll reflect on this last scripture and then I'm going to pray for you. 1 Corinthians 2.9 This is what the scripture means when they say, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love Him. Friend, do you want to receive Jesus Christ into your heart? If you do, pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus Christ, I've been living without a living hope. Lord, I've come to know that all my hope really is not hope at all. It's just a dead hope. And today I want to secure my eternity. Today I need living hope. Jesus, I am a sinner. I believe you died on the cross for me. And I believe that you're the only Savior in this world. Today I turn from my sins. Today I give you my heart. And today I ask you to be my Savior for all eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. My dear friend, if you prayed that prayer, you're now born again. I want to encourage you. Find a Bible-believing church. Nothing is more important than God. When you go to that church, though people might be playing and talking, you focus on the Word of God as the preacher preaches. And you'll be encouraged, you'll be strengthened, you'll be given spiritual direction. And I want to also ask you, take time at home. Put on some worship song. Take time at home. Read your Bible. You'll never be sorry. Until we meet again, may God richly bless you.